The young mother is terrified when a mysterious ghostly baby suddenly appears in her newborn son's crib. Aaron and Patrick Halloway promised to do everything to protect their son the day they brought him home. Prior to his arrival, they thoroughly researched the safest products for his nursery. The nursery for little Sam was a perfect blend of soft blue, pale yellow, and lavender colors. It was equipped with an ergonomic and advanced crib, an anti-allergic mattress, and a mobile with a small nanny cam above the crib, so Aaron and Pat could monitor Sam throughout the night. Of course, as soon as Aaron was home from the hospital, all their relatives and friends came over to visit and to meet little Sam. Among their visitors was Patrick's great-grandma Shiovin. Siavin was delighted with Sam and immediately declared that he looked exactly like her own grandfather George, who had the gift of seeing fairies. Aaron smiled politely, and the elderly woman tenderly cradled Sam and caressed his cheek. Sam opened his eyes and yawned. Why? cried Siavin. He's got the look. What look? asked Aaron, itching to take her baby back into her own arms, but afraid to seem rude. His eyes? They'd be the color of the moon. You'd best watch out the fairies don't steal you baby and leave a changeling. Seeing Aaron's shocked expression, Savin's granddaughter, Patrick's mother, decided to intervene. Away with you then, Grandma Savin, and don't you be scaring the young ones with those old country stories, she cried. But Savin clucked her tongue and kept muttering about the full moon and changelings. Aaron and Patrick were relieved when the family finally left and they could get back to enjoying their baby. Unfortunately, they had just finished changing little Sam's first nappy when Pat's phone rang. Saying some not very nice words under his breath, Pat answered it then hung up and turned apologetically to Aaron. I'm so sorry, Aaron, he said. I know I'm supposed to be on paternity leave, but this is our biggest client. It's okay, Pat, said Aaron gently. Sam's tummy is full, he's clean, and I think he's ready for his first sleep in his new bed. I'll take the monitor with me and go down and sort out that pile of presents the family brought. Pat gently kissed the sleepy Sam's tiny feet and hugged his wife. I'll be back, and if you need me, I'll be here in 10 minutes. Aaron lay Sam down on his bed, made sure the nanny cam and the night light were on, and went downstairs to tidy up. There really were too many presents. She decided that she and Pat could put some of the gifts away and bring them out in a year or two. Maybe three. Also. If you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these animal stories every day. Now, back to the story. Who gave a newborn a set of Legos or a tricycle? Aaron could understand the excitement though. Sam was the first grandchild on both sides of the family and they had waited for a long, long time for him. Aaron and Pat had married eight years before and even though they were both determined to start a family right away, it just didn't happen. Doctors told Aaron that because she suffered from endometriosis, in vitro was their best bet. But the first three procedures just didn't take. Then when Aaron had gone to the clinic for the last procedure, the doctor had examined her, frowned, called the nurse, and insisted on an ultrasound. Then he grinned. Congratulations, Mrs. Holloway. You don't need me. You're pregnant. The next nine months had passed in a blend of excitement and anxiety but finally, Sam had been born healthy and so beautiful. Erin heard a tiny sound from the nanny cam monitor and picked it up. A scream lodged in her throat. The monitor showed her baby lying on his side, stretching his little legs, but next to him facing him was another baby. Erin's hands were shaking so badly, she could hardly hit Pat's number on speed dial. Pat, she whispered hoarsely. Come home, come home now. What? asked Pat. Erin. Are you okay? What's wrong? Is Sam okay? There's a changeling, a ghost. Come quick, cried Aaron and ran upstairs. But there was no changeling and no ghost baby in the crib next to Sam who was sleeping peacefully. Aaron looked again at the monitor and there it was, a pale blue, eerily glowing baby who looked a lot like Sam. Then she heard Pat's footsteps on the stairs. Aaron, he cried. What's going on? Shaking, Aaron handed Pat the nanny cam monitors and saw the color drain from her husband's face. Pat took two steps and bent over his son's crib, but there was no ghost baby. Pat looked at the nanny cam monitor again, then at the tiny camera suspended in the mobile and grinned. I've got it. He whispered 
and gently pulled back the undersheet in Sam's crib. Printed on the mattress in palest blue was an adorable illustration of a sleeping newborn. There's your fairy changeling, said Pat, and serves you right for listening to Grandma Siovin. But it's only visible on the nanny cam, cried Aaron, flushed with embarrassment. This nanny cam is state of the art with night vision, so it picked up a trace of phosphorescence in the print under the bedsheet, explained Patrick. As you can see, there's no ghosts, ghoulies, or changelings, no matter what Grandma Stobbins says.